I think that Israel is pivotal to prophecy because both the covenants in the Bible and the prophecies in the Bible center on Israel. For example, when you look at the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12, it talks about not only land promises to Israel, but also seed promises, how the Messiah would come from the seed of Abraham. And there's also promises of great blessing, not only to the Jewish people, but also to the Gentiles. And then there's other prophetic covenants that come after that, such as the Davidic covenant in 2 Samuel 7, which expands on the idea that the Messiah would come not just from the line of Abraham, but from the line of David as well. And the prophecies in the Bible largely deal with Israel. I'm thinking, for example, the 70th week of Daniel. The first 69 weeks dealt with Israel. The 70th week will deal with Israel as well. In Scripture, the tribulation period is referred to as the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, of course, Jacob is a term that metaphorically refers to Israel. It's a time of Israel's trouble in the tribulation period. So you've got both the covenants and biblical prophecy which specify Israel. But here's the problem that we have today. There's a new movement called replacement theology, which basically says that Israel is irrelevant. It doesn't matter that Israel has come back to the land today because all those promises that deal with Israel in the Old Testament, they are fulfilled spiritually in the church. And therefore, we don't have to pay any attention to what's happening in the Middle East today. One of the big problems with that line of thought is that even when you get to the New Testament, we find that Israel and the church are still seen to be distinct from each other. And when prophecies are given in the New Testament, uh, they recognize the distinction between the church and Israel. Now there's a basic interpretive principle that I really love when it comes to interpreting Bible prophecy. When the plain sense makes good sense, Seek no other sense, lest you end up in nonsense. Now, when you read about Israel in prophecy, it really means Israel. When you read about the church in prophecy, it really means the church. Now, all you got to do to solve this dilemma is to read the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 9 through 11. Because in Romans chapter 9 through 11, the Apostle Paul clearly states that God still has a plan for Israel. And one of the things that we learn from Bible prophecy is that the Jews will one day become regenerate and recognize Jesus as the divine Messiah. Here's how it's going to happen. In the end times, at the very end of the tribulation period, the forces of the Antichrist are going to move against the Jewish remnant that are hiding out, probably in Petra, out in the wilderness. And as the forces of Antichrist are moving against the Jewish remnant, they supernaturally come to recognize that Jesus truly is the divine Messiah. You might remember in Acts 9 that the Apostle Paul supernaturally came to recognize that Jesus is the divine Messiah. So too will the Jews recognize that Jesus is the divine Messiah, and they will cry out to, for deliverance from the divine Messiah. And guess what? That's when the second coming of Christ happens. Christ comes again. Christ speaks the word and the forces of Antichrist die instantly. And the Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire. And then scripture indicates that this newly born Jewish remnant will enter into Christ's millennial kingdom and they will come into full inheritance of the land promises. Not only promised in the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12, but also in the land covenant that we find in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Once that happens, God will finally have fulfilled all of his promises to Israel. So what we need in the church today is the death of replacement theology. We need a return to the Bible and we need proper interpretation of the Bible which says, when the plain sense makes good sense, seek no other sense lest you end up in nonsense.